feel like such an old fart sometimes. I'm only 43. My kids talk in all sorts of weird ways. Like sus. What on earth does sus mean? Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're gonna be installing the faucet, um, the drain, the P-trap, and getting all that finished up to finish off this bathroom. Recently, we finished redoing the tile, did some of the wall paneling here, the decorative paneling, uh, put in a new high efficiency, uh, high pressure toilet, um, did the shower head with the uh, rainfall um, top part, and now we still got some touch up work to finish up the walls and do some caulking work. Uh, but what I wanna show you today is how to install a faucet We've got a three, uh, two handle, three hole faucet, uh, a new drain, and then connecting the P-trap to the wall. Uh, pretty simple and straightforward, but uh, if you're going through and doing this for the first time and need a visual, this video will be a perfect reference for you to follow. If you wanna see more videos like this, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below. And if you wanna be notified when new videos are uploaded, make sure to hit that bell icon next to the subscribe button so that you get a no new notification anytime uh, I put a new video up. Let me show you what we're gonna use. So we've got a P-trap kit um, that is ready to go, all comes together. We've got a new um, push down stainless steel um, drain for a bathroom sink. It's got the top section that just clicks down really nice. You'll see it here in a minute when I get it installed. And it also pulls right out so you can unclog anything that gets stuck in there as a little built-in basket. I really like that style of drain. I'll put the link to all the stuff down in the description below. And then for the faucet, we've got a brush nickel finish um, modern style faucet. It's got the waterfall top and the square handles. I didn't want the uh, round or the um, kind of oval shape handles. I think this looks a lot cleaner and got this off of Amazon. I was shopping around at the stores. Closest one I could find at the local stores was about 300, 350 bucks. This came in way under a hundred dollars and got here in one day. Gotta love Amazon and had great reviews too. Again, I'll put the link down in the description. Comes with everything you need. The two handles, the faucet itself, nice braided um, mesh connectors all the quick connects and o-rings and everything i checked it out um, everything looks really nice good quality good to go so these are the parts we're going to be using and i'll go through step by step and show you guys how to do the install got all my things here ready to go i'm gonna go grab some tools get yourself a flashlight i really like this one rechargeable super bright on this side and on this side um, i'll leave a link down in the description if you want to get your own you want uh, an adjustable wrench and um, this type of pipe wrench. Now we've got three main things to install here. We've got our faucet and handles. We've got our drain. And then we have our P-trap that goes underneath and into the wall. Because we're starting from scratch and none of this is in place, the easiest way to start so that you don't block your path to get to the things you need to and make it more difficult on yourself Start with your faucet, then you want to get the P-trap started and sort of measured to where you kind of think it's in the right place under the drain. Get your drain installed firmly on there, and then finish it off with your P-trap installation. So, first thing we're going to do is start with the faucet. Let's look at what all we have as far as parts go. So we've got our split hose. This one goes from the hot and the cold handles up to the main connector at the bottom of your main water spout. We've got your hot water and cold water. These go to your valves on the wall and this end goes to your actual hot water handles. You've got your cold water handle right there. We'll just put it here for safekeeping. You've got your hot water handle right here. We'll stick it in here to keep it out of the way. And you've got your main water spout 
our fancy little guy right here. And just going to leave that in there for now so that it's out of the way. Let's get these put aside for now. All right. And if you see this guy, the bottom, you've got this large nut and the plastic washer there. What we want to do is remove this, take this all the way off, Once you get that nut off, you also want to take off this rubber washer. And different faucets are going to be different, so read your instructions. On this one, it has this nice little rubber o-ring that's inset into the base of the housing. So that'll seal it and keep it from uh, being metal on marble contact. So you're going to have this rubber o-ring right here that makes contact with your mounting surface. So make sure your mounting surface is clean. If it's not, wipe it down, get a wet paper towel, simple green, alcohol pads, whatever you need to, and, uh, and get it all cleaned. I've got a little bit of uh, residue on here from packaging. I'm gonna get all that cleaned up, and then we should have a nice clean surface area to start with. Now that that's clean, what I'm gonna do is place this guy right here. Get it sort of positioned where you want. It doesn't need to be perfect. It's going to move around. And I'm going to go underneath and from the bottom. First, I want to put this rubber washer onto the large stem, the threads, and then put this nut on, get it finger tight, and then come back up here, position this where I want as far as being straight. And then front to back, you'll have a little bit of room for adjustment as well. And lastly, make sure it's centered between these two holes. Now here we are underneath. You can see I've got my rubber gasket there. I've got my nuts started. I'm gonna get it hand tight, then go up top, make adjustments. Then I'll come back down here and get it tightened up. All right, I've got it all tightened up. Let's go back up top and make sure that it's still in the right place. Looks like it moved a little bit. So just grab it, gently move it and straighten it out. Find yourself a flat edge that you can compare against and get it straight. Here we go. Pretty good. Maybe a little bit this way. Close enough. That is just about, oh, no, a little bit more. All right, perfect. Now I'm going to get the cold water and the hot water spouts installed the same way. But before I do that, I'm going to need to connect the hose to the bottom there. And the reason you want to connect the hose first is that this gets a little difficult to do once you get that uh, handle permanently mounted. Now let me show you what you need to do. So this end right here, it's got two O-rings on it on this particular one. And it goes into that hole right there. First thing you want to do is just get yourself a little wet paper towel and wipe in there. Make sure there's no crumbs or residue or anything because the way that this hose seals is with these two O-rings and it needs to be nice and clean inside that hole. Now once you do that, next thing you want to do is take just a little bit of vegetable oil, olive oil, whatever you got handy. If you don't have anything, just lick the O-rings. I know, sounds stupid. Just lick them. You just need a little bit of lubrication on there. And that way the O-rings don't bind or rip on the way in to the hole right there. A lot of people assemble this stuff and they start getting mad at the manufacturers because it's leaking here, it's leaking there. Usually leaks you have are because of two things. One, you didn't lubricate your O-rings before you installed them. Or two, you didn't put Teflon on a fitting that required Teflon. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this lubed up with a little dab of oil around it and get it inserted into here, screwed on nice and tight with my adjustable wrench, and then do the same on the hot water spout. Now that I've got the hoses connected to the base of both the hot water handle and the cold water handle, again, 
make sure you color coordinate them if you have that available on your hoses this is the blue with the blue cold water handle and this is the red with the red hot water handle next thing we got to do is get these ready for installation into the countertop you'll see a slightly different mounting mechanism on these you've got two little screws there to put tension on it on a large nut this large nut has to be backed off. You can see it spins there. We'll take this off, and then you've got a metal washer there and a rubber washer. Those will come off as well. You're, you're gonna install those in the same order underneath the countertop, and on top is gonna be just this metal plate at the bottom of the handle. Got those taken off, and here's what's left. And as you can see, there's a nice little O-ring at the base, just like on the faucet. That way you don't have direct metal to countertop contact and you've got a little bit of cushion there. And this O-ring, I don't know if you can see it in the video, it sticks out of the base just a little bit. That's perfect, that's what we wanna see. So what I'm gonna do is get this inserted here. We'll turn it that way. I'm gonna pull the hardware off of the cold water handle, put it in as well. I got these two inserted here and now we're gonna go up from the bottom First, rubber washer is gonna go on and the metal washer. Then we're gonna screw on this large nut. And then once this large nut is just hand tight, you don't have to get it very tight, just hand tight. Then you're gonna use a Phillips screw going back and forth on these two screws to get that last bit of firmness on the connection, especially on these two handles because as people are turning them, they've got more of a chance to actually rotate in the mounting spots so you want to make sure they're really nice and tight i've got the rubber washer the metal washer and this nut tightened up grab it make it hand tight same with here grab it make it hand tight now i'm going to go back up top make any adjustments and then come back down here and tighten these four phillips screws yep that's definitely not straight so i'm gonna put it in the open position I'm gonna grab it by the base. Don't, don't force the handle. Grab it by the base. If you need to, go back down and loosen it up a little bit. Oh, this one's a little bit looser. All right. That one is, yep, that's about where I want that one. And this one needs to make a, about a third of a turn. I might have to go loosen up that nut a little bit. Yep, let me loosen that, I'll come back up. All right, let's try this again. There we go. Let's see, how does that look? Pretty close. Now, there's not one right way to do this. If you want these at an angle, by all means, you can put them like that. It's up to you. Or you can put them flat. Well, let me see, man, maybe, maybe that works better. How's that look? Like that. Look a little wonky. What do y'all think? This way or the other way? Put down in the comments below. I'm curious what you guys think as far as which way looks better. Again, there's no right or wrong. I think I like them better this way. Now, one other mistake people make a lot. You saw I was grabbing the base, right? I'm not grabbing the handle trying to force it. I'm grabbing the base. You don't want to grab the handle and try to force it. These handles are meant to be operated smoothly just to turn the water on and off. They're not meant to yank on and put a lot of force on to try to adjust this thing. So grab the base, make your adjustments, tighten the nut, and then you're done. Don't use the handles to force these to twist. All right, my son said it looks better this way. So we're gonna keep it that way. I'm gonna go down below, tighten up those Phillips screws, and then we'll connect the hoses. Now we need to get this guy connected, these two ends, go to the hot and the cold water um, outlets that are on the bottom. They're gonna be the ones that are sticking out and have the O-rings. These are quick connects. And the way these work is you push on this little spring-loaded guy. You push there, you push it on, you let go, locks in place. Easy as that. These are gonna be O-ring connections. So again, you wanna make sure there's no crud inside these. Get a little wet paper towel, Wiggle it around in there, same as this side. Make sure it's clean. Then get a little bit of 
vegetable oil, olive oil, put on the O-rings at the bottom of these two and at the bottom of the faucet. Make sure all of them are nice and lubricated. And then you want to push this in, pop it onto the cold water, push this one in, pop it onto the hot water, and then this one, pop it onto the bottom of the faucet. Here we are underneath. This is the cold water spout that it's gonna go onto. This is the one underneath the faucet. And this is the one for the hot water. Now we've got all those on. Push them in a little bit, wiggle them around, make sure they're seated. Wiggle, wiggle, push in, wiggle, wiggle. Those are all good. Next, we've got one last step. Last thing we need to do is connect our hot water connector to our hot water valve and our cold water connector to our cold water valve. Now these are compression fittings, so they had these on them with the little uh, copper insert. We're not using that type of hose. This one has its own built-in nut and washer to seal. So all we're gonna do is connect this directly onto there. Now for this type of connector that takes the compression fittings or has the washers like this, you do not need Teflon. Um, for some connections, you will need Teflon. So make sure you're paying attention to that. And if you need Teflon on the connection and there's no compression fitting or washers, you're gonna need Teflon. Pay attention. Most of them look like this. So I'm gonna get these on one by one. I'm gonna put the hot water on then the cold water. Do not turn them on at this point because you do not have a drain. Just get them connected and out of the way. So let's get those on one by one, get them nice and snug. And we should be all done with the faucet. Now, if all you're doing is installing a faucet and the rest of your plumbing is all there, at this point, you'll be done. And you'll be able to enjoy a new faucet. What you'll want to do is turn it on up top, turn on the hot water, turn on the cold water, make sure you don't have any leaks here. Make sure you don't have any leaks here at these two. Make sure you don't have a leak at the bottom of the uh, faucet where that connection goes in. And then finally, make sure you don't have any leaks up top where the handles in the faucet are. Sometimes it's luck of the draw. Very rarely, but sometimes something will leak. If it's at one of these connections, you probably just need to snug it up. If it's one of the connections with the O-rings on it, you want to pop it off, clean everything off, make sure you don't have any crud or dust in there. Even the smallest bit of dust will sometimes cause a leak. Put it back on, see if it leaks or not. Uh, and if you end up doing all the troubleshooting and it still leaks, probably just need to take it back to the store. If you bought it online, send it back, get a new set, set shipped out to you. Uh, a lot of times the manufacturers, if you call them up, they'll just send you the replacement parts. So you don't have to take it back to the store or mail it back in. Uh, but it's just luck of the draw. Even with the most expensive brands, I've seen them leak every now and then. More times than not, I'd say 90 plus percent of the time, you'll be totally fine. If you have a leak, it's just because you didn't tighten something up or you didn't clean it. But Occasionally, manufacturing defects happen. No reason to be pissed off about it. Just get it replaced and move on. Let me get these connected and then we'll move on to the drain. Now we've got those connected. Got them nice and going the same direction so that it looks symmetrical as it can be. Next thing I'm gonna do is get my P-trap lined up. I had to come to Lowe's real quick to grab a little extension pipe because my P-trap wouldn't quite reach the bottom of the new drain. So we've got our new extension pipe and we're gonna go back home and get this thing installed. All right, back home with our extension piece. So let's get our drain, this guy. So it's got a big nut here and then two rubber washers. So we're gonna take this nut off, and take this bottom rubber washer off. Pay attention to the direction the cone is going. And we're gonna leave that top washer on. I'm gonna insert it from the top of the sink. There we go. All right, we got that off. Top washer's still on. I'm gonna put it in through the top. Okay, it's down right there. Now we're gonna take this rubber washer Slip it back on, cone in the same direction. Put it up all the way. And that's gonna help seal it right there and also center it into that hole. Next, we're gonna take this big old nut. Get the thread started. 
twist it on. And at this point, we're gonna tighten this guy. So what I'm gonna do is put the camera down. I'm gonna put one hand on this real tightly and the other hand on this guy, get it real nice and tight and then use my wrench to give it another maybe turn and a half, maybe two turns. All right, that is nice and snug, doesn't move. You should have a little bit of budge in it. I don't know if you can see that in the video, but you don't want it wobbling all around. So that's tight. We're gonna check it from up top. Make sure it's still centered. Yep, it's good in the right position, not angled, cockeyed or anything like that. Now, what we're gonna do is, so this knot right here, I'm gonna loosen it up. That's that part of the P-trap and you'll see this is fairly long. Now what that means is you have a lot of room for adjustability in and out. So you want this nut on there, but not tight enough to hold it tight. Next, we wanna put this portion on, which is our P-trap right here. And the same thing here, I want it snug, but I wanna be able to move it. This is like a puzzle piece, right? In and out, side to side. The reason you want it loose because you want to be able to line this up with this so that you don't end up with this pipe being all angled. Now, the reason I had to go to Lowe's to get an extension was for this piece right here. I had a little bit of a gap, so I had to get an extension. Let's put that on. Here we go. I hope this gets you a good visual. So everything still kind of wiggles around. This is loose, that's loose. So first thing I want to do is get this guy snug down on here. Oop. A little too low, that's good. Now I wanna get this nut started to where it's holding the pipe centered on, holding this centered on this. All right, there we go. Loose enough to move. Now I wanna get this one started for the same reason, to keep these two centered on each other. So now all of these are kind of snug still have a little bit of room for wiggling and movement. And I want to get everything wiggled around, make sure all the angles are straight. You want this pipe and this pipe to be uh, a straight shot right here. You don't want any bends between these two or these two. For these two here, you want to make sure that it's not being yanked this way or this way or back and forth. And then the same for this connection here. You want to make sure it's not pushing this way or that way or side to side. Get them all sort of angled uh, the way they need to be. And then once you're ready, I'm gonna start on this end. I'm gonna hold this pipe while I tighten that nut, hand tight, no tools. Then this one, then this one, then that one. Let me show you another reason why this is important. So I am directly in front of this pipe right now. And as you can see, as I'm directly in front of this, the drain on the wall, is not directly behind it. It's a little over the side. That means this pipe here has to be slightly angled this way. And then that pipe has to be in and out of the wall the right amount to make sure that this is all lining up. And then this is also lining up. So all of that is important. Don't just tighten one up and shove the rest into place. Don't use those accordion style ones that end up causing sort of uh, all sort of drain leaks and things like that. This is the right way to do it. I'm not a plumber, but I can tell you, done this a hundred times, this is the right way to do it. Don't cheat, don't be lazy. So now that I've got all these snug, I'm gonna grab them one more time at each joint, tighten them as much as I can by hand, and then we should be good to go to do a leak test. Perfect, all tight, all snug. Last step is my drain. Take the little plastic protective cover off. Oops, there we are, that's off. You can see what I meant about a basket. So this has a built-in basket. Somebody drops a ring or something in there. All you do is pull this guy out and whatever they dropped will be in this basket. It's awesome. If you're ever re replacing your drain, I would highly recommend this style. Um, you can get them all over the place. I buy it on Amazon because it's cheaper. And it's decent quality. I'll put the link in the description below. Do with it as you please. And then uh, these don't screw in like the old school ones that have a little knob here and a handle and all that stuff. They're very easy. Just sits in there. That's closed. 
that's open. Isn't that awesome? Closed, no water goes in, all the water stands, and open. Super easy. So I'm gonna leave this out for now. I'm gonna turn on the water, and I'm gonna let the water run, get all this junk out of here, get in the drain, and the first places I'm gonna check for leaks are on the faucet. I'm gonna check at the bottom, at all the joints I was mentioning before, right there, right there, at the O-ring connection there, there, and there. Make sure none of that leaks while I have the handles in the off position still. Here, here, and then at the base. Now, before I turn on the water, what I wanna do, because there's gonna be air in these lines, I want to turn the hot and the cold water on because I don't want air trapped in there and then potentially causing leaks that way. And then slowly, you wanna open these. Might not cause any harm if you do it rapidly, but this is the right way to do it. All right, so the hot one is on. I'm gonna turn the hot water off now. Now we'll turn the cold one on, slowly. So it's all the way open. And we'll turn the cold water off. So now that there's water and pressure in the lines, I wanna go through and check for leaks. Here, here, here. Right there and right there and then at all three of those connections. Let me do that real quick, I'll be right back. All right, let me show you where we're checking. So, you wanna check at the top of this fitting and at the bottom, touch everywhere. Make sure nothing's wet. Same here, touch all over it. Make sure there's no wetness, no moisture. Same on this one, those are all dry. Then you wanna check here, these are the screw-in fittings. Check down the hose in case you're getting a little bit of drippage that's coming down and you don't feel it up there. Same on this one. Check there. Check all the way down the hose. Then you want to go back and you want to check here at this thing, both at the top and at the bottom. Sometimes, depending on what's not sealed up, they'll leak differently. Same on this one at the top and underneath the fitting, and then again, all the way down the hose. Sometimes they'll drip and just have a little drop of water there hanging out at the bottom. These are all dry, we're good to go. Last thing you wanna check, especially if you got older valves, check around the knob of the valve. Older valves will leak there as the O-rings and the seals inside wear out. These are new because my old ones actually leaked. So I had to shut off the water when we took all this stuff out and put two new valves on. If you do put new valves on, more than likely you're gonna need Teflon at this joint here where they screw on, or if it's a compression fitting, you may not. So all that stuff is leak free. Next, we need to check for leaks in the drain pipe. Let me show you how to do that. Oh, one more thing I forgot. So the other thing you wanna check, as these knobs turn, they have seals inside. Sometimes, they won't leak here, they'll leak when they're open. Sometimes they'll leak only when they're halfway open. Sometimes they'll leak when they're all the way open or sometimes they'll leak when they're closed. My point is, slowly turn it. And as you're slowly turning it, check all around the base and make sure no water's leaking out anywhere. Man, I really like this faucet. Very happy with that. What a choice my wife made on this one. Good choice, honey. Now we'll check this one. And we'll look for leaks all around. All dry, we're good to go. Just a little bit of splashing there. All right, so all those are leak free. Now, in order to check for the drain pipes sealing up correctly, you can take three or four gallons of water and pour it in here with the stopper in and then pull the stopper out and see if it leaks. Or you can put the stopper in 
fill it with water. And then once it's filled, pull the stopper out and let it all drain. And as soon as you pull that, go down below and check the drain pipes to make sure that they are not leaking. Man, I really like this faucet. It came out good. It goes really well with the color of these cabinets. Yep, I like it. Oh, I gotta finish caulking and sealing around there. Yeah, this looks great. I don't know if you can tell in the video, it's like a charcoal blue color. We painted our kitchen cabinets that same color. All right, so this guy's full. It's going through the diverter valve. We have plenty of water in here. Turn it off. And I'm gonna do the clicky clicky. And what that does is fills up the entire drain pipe. So it's not just at the bottom of the P-trap. So we wanna check up here. At the top, no drips. We wanna check at the top of this. All good there. You heard that, so the water's done draining, but if there is anything dripping out, we'll feel it. And you wanna check at the top of this one, then underneath, underneath this one, and at the top, and around here, and around the back of it finally. All good, we're all sealed up, everything works. We don't have any leaks and we're all done. I hope you enjoyed this video. Again, would love it if you subscribe, help the channel out. And if you have any comments or questions, leave them in the comments below. I'm always happy to help. In the meantime, I love you guys. I'll see you next time. Oh, I guess we should put the door on this bathroom, huh? Yep, let me go get the door. Man, that looks really good. What do you guys think? You think it looks appropriate in here? Still need to put uh, all the towel holders up there. And put the toilet paper holder up here. Yeah, let me know what y'all think. Do y'all like the more traditional ones or this style? Again, links all in the description below. Look at that. We got a door. It's officially a bathroom. Well, Mirror, fixtures, pictures. Gotta hang them still. Oh, what do the kids say? It's on like Donkey Kong. Well, the door is on like Donkey Kong. Did I use that right? Maybe, I don't know. I feel like such an old fart sometimes. I'm only 43. My kids talk in all sorts of weird ways. Like sus, what on earth does sus mean? I don't get it. They say weird things.